showing you how to make this really cozy tree skirt in Bernat blanket yarn. So the beginning of our tree skirt will just be in a nice gray. You could choose white, black, any solid color really um, to get started with our pattern. And then we're going to border, border the tree skirt in a nice uh, plaid, buffalo plaid style pattern. Okay, so we're going to begin using a 10 millimeter N crochet hook and later into our plaid pattern we'll need to up the size and I'm using an 11.5 millimeter and these are Susan Bates Crystallite hooks. So I'm going to begin starting out uh, this tree skirt I'm working on in the pale gray. The other one I showed you started with the dark gray. You'll also need coal. This color here is purple, purple plum. And then this is from the Brights collection and it is race car red. Okay, so we're gonna begin by making a slip knot. Put that on the hook. And then we want to chain 26. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I've worked up my 26 chains and now we're gonna work a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three. Yarn over, go through the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Double crochet into the next chain. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And if you need to review your double crochet stitch, I will put a link in the description box that you can go specifically to learn how to double crochet if you're not used to this stitch. And we'll just work one double crochet in each chain across. So in total, you should have 24 double crochet stitches and I'm gonna meet you at the end. Okay, so I have worked 24 double crochets and you can go back and you can count. Don't count the that starting chain there. Just count the double crochets that you've made, making sure that you have 24. And then we'll turn our work And chain two. One, two. Okay, so now we're going to begin our increase pattern. I'm not going to count my chain two as a stitch, so that means I will work into this very first stitch here. So we'll do a double crochet in the first stitch. We'll work two double crochet in the next stitch. And now this will be our repeat pattern. One double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochet in the next stitch. And now repeat that pattern all the way across. So one double crochet in the next, two double crochet in the next, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so you're ending, you should be ending with two double crochet in the last stitch. And if you count out your stitches for this row, you will have 36 stitches. So each row, we're gonna increase by 12 stitches going forward. 
So this will be our increase pattern as we continue. So the first row we worked one double crochet in the first stitch and then two double crochet in the next. And now this row will work one double crochet in the first, one double crochet in the next, and then two double crochet in the next. So to be consistent with increasing 12 stitches per row, every row will add one more double crochet before we do two double crochet. Okay, so now just to complete this row, this is the repeat pattern, one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then two double crochet in the next. So after completing this row, we had another 12 stitches to 36, so we should have 48 stitches. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to get this curve. This is where our um, stand will be for our tree, and this will curve around. So now we're on to row four, and just so I'm sure that you are understanding this increase pattern, I'm gonna show you one more time. And then I'm just gonna complete the rest of my rows until we get to a total of 168 stitches will be 13 rows in total. So let's chain two. And now, so our second row, we did one double crochet and then two. The next row, we did two double crochet in the first and the next and then two. Now, we'll do a double crochet in the first, the second, and the third stitch because each row we're doing one additional double crochet before our two double crochet and then we do two double crochet. And then we repeat the pattern of one double crochet in each of the next three. So there's one, two, three and then two double crochet in the next stitch and the PDF pattern will be available for purchase if you want to follow along with the pattern okay so now I'm gonna jump ahead so keep doing this until you have a total of 168 stitches which is a total of 13 rows including our first row here okay okay so this is what it should look like. So this can kind of come around and we have our little hole here for the base of our tree and I have 13 rows in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 168 stitches. So now I'll join back on here. So we're going to begin our plaid pattern now. So for my first row, I will begin with black and I'm just going to call this color burgundy. Just to make it simple, black, burgundy, and red will just be the terms I'll use. They have different color names, but let's just go with that so I don't mess up as I go along. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change my color on that last stitch. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's come in here. Let's work. We're always ending with two double crochet. So let's pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And now to change this color to black, bring in the black and pull it through. And now for our plaid, 
I am going to include my chain as a stitch. So when we do that, we're going to chain three because the chain three is a height is the height. Let me turn this work a bit. One, two, three. So the chain three is a height of a double crochet. So that means this stitch right here, we're not going to work into it. We're going to work in to the next. I mean, you could continue to chain two and do that. I'm just to really see that um, consistency of the square look, I want my chain to be included as a stitch. You can um, crochet over that end if you want, or just leave it and weave it in at the end. I actually prefer working the, the plaid pattern in the round because we don't have as much cutting. We do have cutting involved when we're working with rows, but for the tree skirt, it really needs this opening to get it around the tree. So we're gonna work in rows for this plaid pattern. So yarn over and we're gonna go into the next stitch. Yarn over, go into the next stitch. Pull through two and we're gonna change color. So we're not gonna finish yarning over. So now when we're changing color and carrying the yarn, we're gonna keep our burgundy yarn to the front. We're gonna keep our black yarn to the back. And I'll show you as I go along how this is gonna prevent us from getting tangled. So we're gonna bring in our burgundy, pull through. And now we want to crochet over the black tail as we go, okay? So we're gonna yarn over I'm going to go through the stitch making sure the black yarn is going over the hook as well. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Go through the next stitch, make sure the black yarn is above the hook as well. Pull through two, pull through two. Go through the next stitch and now We'll pull through two and then we're changing back to black because three stitches for every color change here. So we're keeping the burgundy to the front, the black is to the back. So now we'll yarn over with the black. So see now we're not tangled and we'll yarn over making sure the burgundy yarn is above the hook as well as the stitch. And now we're going to be, we're on our third stitch, so we're going to change back. We're going to drop the black, making sure it goes to the back. Grabbing the burgundy, yarning over, pulling through. And then we're carrying the black along again. So this is all we're going to do for this entire row. Now our burgundy will get carried throughout. But at the end of this row, we will have to cut the black yarn. And now we drop off the burgundy to the front, grabbing the black, yarning over, pulling through. See how simple this is to create and carry the color along. It's really, really simple. Dropping off the black, burgundy. So if you remember those simple things, uh, just we're gonna keep the burgundy to the front the whole time because our black and our red, we alternate. So the black and the red will keep to the back. The burgundy will keep to the front. And I have a hat pattern, uh, Buffalo plaid hat pattern video as well that you can check out. And it shows you how to do this pattern in the round, which I do prefer, but now you'll get to also see how we're working the plaid in rows with the tree skirt pattern. Okay, so I'm just getting to the end of my row. I'm just gonna cut the black so we can, so we can move that out of the way. And now we're gonna change to red on our last stitch. So go through, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through two. And now we'll bring the red in and pull through and we'll chain three. One, two, three. And just turn our work here. Make sure we don't start out tangled. So we wanna keep the burgundy to the front and the red to the back. And we're gonna crochet over the burgundy as we go here. So our chain three counts as our first stitch, which, so we won't work into this one, we'll work into the next stitch. Yarn over, go through and make sure our burgundy is above the hook. And then we'll drop the red off to the back, pulling up the burgundy. And then we'll carry our red along. Dropping off the burgundy to the front, picking up the red from behind. And this will be the pattern we continue with for this row. And again, just to make sure you're always dropping the red off to the back, picking up the burgundy dropping the burgundy to the front and that will keep you from getting tangled. So I'll complete this row and I'll meet you up at the end. Burgundy to the front, grabbing the red. Okay, so I'm just working to the end of this row and I'm gonna cut my red so we can move that out of the way. We'll be bringing back in our black yarn. So we'll be doing our last double crochet into the turning chain. So I'm gonna crochet it into that third chain And then on the last stitch, we'll bring in the black yarn and pull through and chain three. Okay, and now we're gonna turn our work again. And so we're just working back now to the same pattern of our first row. So it's basically identical to the first row. And this will be the last row we're gonna work with the 10 millimeter hook. And then we will move up to the larger hook so that our it doesn't start to curve in too much. And if you're finding it's curling uh, too much at this point, you could switch up to the bigger hook. So working, make sure to carry along your burgundy. And we're gonna drop the black to the back and pick our burgundy up from the front. And we'll just continue like I said, just the same as that first row of our pattern. And once I complete this row, I'll meet back up with you again where we'll switch to the larger hook. Okay, so I'm just getting to the end of this row and I'm gonna cut my black. And I'm just going to weave in all of these ends when I'm finished. So now we're to our 
uh, chain three. So we're gonna slip or we're gonna do our final DC in the top of the chain three. And now we're going back to red and pull through. And at this point, just leave your loop and we're gonna change up to the larger hook. And chain three. Okay, so the larger hook now, what will happen because we're not increasing, this will start to like curl up and tighten. So rather than just a simple way to now increase this so we don't get that happening, I'm just going up to a bigger crochet hook. Because I want this border to be a little bit bigger. Now it would be fine to stop now if that's as big of a border as you want, but I want mine to be a little bit thicker here. So now we're just repeating row two of the pattern. So we're going red, burgundy, red. So what we want to do is make sure we're carrying the burgundy along with us drop the red to the back burgundy to the front and so this is just repetition at this point we're just repeating the pattern and I'm going to complete this row and then I'm going to do another row of the burgundy black with the larger hook and that's as wide of a border as I'm going to have for this tree skirt. So I'm going to complete these rows just off camera and meet you back up for the finishing touches. Okay so I've worked up two rows in my larger hook and I've just finished up this row here and now as you can see we have some ends so I think it would be a great time now just to stop and weave in those ends before we finish off our edging. I'm just using a yarn needle here for bulky yarn it has a nice big head on it and then what you want to do is just weave your yarn back weave it one way and then weave it back into the opposite direction. And I'm weaving these ends on the wrong side. Okay, so at the end of this row, so we've cut all of our ends, all of our ends have been weaved both sides. So all that is finished. Now what we wanna do is work down this edge in our burgundy yarn. We will then switch to gray when we get to this section here. So chain one and just evenly work single crochet stitches down along the edge. Okay, so I've worked, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm just gonna finish my ninth here. And then we're gonna yarn over with the gray. Pull through. At this point, you can drop off the burgundy and we'll cut that. But as I crochet in the gray, I'm gonna go over my tail just to save a little bit of weaving. And I'm just gonna crochet evenly spaced. I'm gonna crochet all the way through my circle down the side 
And then I'm gonna meet back up over here and join on with some burgundy again to finish that edge. So I'm gonna keep working around. So I've worked up to my corner here and I'm just gonna add three single crochet in that corner just so we can have a nice curve as we work around. And you're just working one single crochet sort of in each stitch around the opening. And I'll add three when I get to this corner as well. So I've worked all the way down to my plaid. And now I will bring in the burgundy again. Dropping the gray and just working single crochet stitches just evenly down along the border. And just make sure you have the same amount of stitches on each side. So there I have nine. And then we'll fasten off and weave in that end. And we'll cut this one as well and weave that end. Okay, so you can use some different um, things to tie your tree skirt together at the back. You could just use your yarn or um, some twine even. Here I have some twine to give it sort of a rustic farmhouse look, but I'm gonna use this um, cord, this rope, and I've pre-cut four strands and I've cut them 42 inches in length. I'm just going to show you how. So I'm going to attach one to the bottom corners. Let's see. You can always use your crochet hook to pull it through if you need to. just pull them so that they're even. And then just tie them. And I've left that there's lots. You could always cut them shorter if you want to. I'm going to add my next one just at the start of the gray. Maybe we'll do this one up at the top and then we can evenly space the last one. So six. So there's how it looks, just using rope to tie it up. I just purchased this, uh, um, this cord from Walmart, but you could also do yarn, which would look 
fine as well. Okay, so I just wanted to lay it out on the floor so you could see the finished look. And as you can see here, this hole is kind of small. So if you want it to sit right up at that very base of your tree, you can pull it right up. But if you want it to come down a little bit farther, just don't tie that one that's right close here. 